Hey guys, welcome to day number 115 of At Home Fitness with Coach A. It is Wednesday, July 8th, and here's what we have for today. Uh, throwing something spicy at you with a uh, you know a little adaptation of Games Helen. Uh, most of you understand what Helen is, three rounds, 400 meter run, 21 kettlebell swings, and 12 pull-ups. Games Helen was the same thing times two, so it's going to be similar to that. Six rounds, 400 meter run. We're going 21 Russian kettlebell swings, so the shorter height, which you'll see demonstrated in a minute, and seven strict toe to bar. Okay, so same kind of taxing grip type workout. It's a little different usage here uh, for the workout, a lot less shoulder overhead, and then pulling in terms of this workout versus Games Helen, um, which in the programming intention should allow you to go faster. So there's no way this should take more than 30 minutes. If you're hitting 30 minutes, um, either cap it at a hard 30, or we maybe needed to shorten those runs a little bit, okay? That's gonna give you five minutes around, which should be plenty of time, even if you're stretching out, you know, somewhere in the two and a half minute range on some of those 400s. We're still talking about 21 Russian swings. They should be well under a minute, and then lots of time for the strict toe to bar, even if those get slow. All right, um, I will walk you guys through the modifications at the end of the video today, so stick around and see that. Now, one extra piece here. Um, somebody mentioned to me the other day that they needed to make up stuff that aren't actually able to follow through with a standard schedule these days, much like they would if they were coming to the gym. So I'm gonna start uh, like I did yesterday, tossing in optional pieces here that you guys can supplement into the equation if you're looking to get some stuff in. Today's optional stuff is going to be hinge work. So before the workout, if you would like, you can get some deadlifts in. Um, a couple of different ways we can think about this. It can be a skill component or it can be a strength component. If it's gonna be a strength component, you guys have barbells, uh, you have weights, Let's work up to a heavy set possibly, and obviously that's gonna kinda of depend on the weights you guys have. Uh, for example, if we only are able to work up to 225, we're probably working up to a heavy higher rep set, um, in which case it's probably not gonna take very many. Um, if you guys have a ton of weight, if you can get to 400 pounds, then you know maybe you're working up to a heavy single, what have you, all right? Uh, maybe we're just working on our deadlifts. Maybe we are elevating the feet, working on a deficit deadlift to try and get the hamstrings to kick back a little bit harder. Uh, maybe we are taking Monday's strength, if we didn't get it, and mixing that into the equation. So the eight to 12 reps of single leg already a hold with the bent over row component. Um, whatever you guys want to do, if you want something extra, I would toss in some hamstring posterior hip work. So something with the hinge to extension, all right? Stay away, obviously, from the kettlebell swing since we're going to be doing those in the workout. Um, a hip thrust wouldn't be a bad thing. Uh, maybe some weighted lunges if you're looking to make the runs especially difficult. All right, either way, uh, stick around. I will walk through the workout, some mechanics, some coaching points, and then get into some modifications for the three movements today. Alright guys, so demo for day number 115, our modified games, Helen. Right, so obviously it's going to start off with that 400 meter run heading down the street for me. Um, I prefer to do mine based on time like we talked about before. So I have a 200 meter distance measured out and I have a half mile distance measured out. So when it comes to the 400s, I'm usually estimating based off of time. Okay, so theoretically I'm going to predict that I'm capable of holding somewhere in the 130 range for my first two 400s on this one. The next two are probably going to be somewhere in the 145 range. Now obviously this is kind of a flowing number, but these are basically just averages. And then the last two are probably going to be more in the two minute range on the clock. So essentially what I'm going to do is for 45 seconds on that first round, run out. Once I hit 45, I'm going to come back. Then there's uh, two in the middle. It's going to be the same thing. Two at the end. It's obviously going to be a minute and a minute. So Theoretically there, if I'm correct in my pacing, 
the distance should be about the same for me on all six of those. Right? So that's one of the ways we can also measure this out to see if we're doing something that is correct, but also to see if we are actually slowing down or if we're maintaining our pace better than we thought or worse than we thought. All right? Now, when it comes to the kettlebell swings, 21 only. Like I said, they're Russian swings, which we are looking to be straight out from the shoulders. The extended arm position should be parallel to the floor. Yes, it's a little shorter. Yes, it's a little quicker. Yes, it's a little easier than being up overhead. That's the point. I want you guys to be able to get through these. Shooting for six rounds of unbroken reps of Russian kettlebell swings, 21. All right. Now, the last movement of the workout is going to be the strict toe to bar. So if we're doing this, RX, the goal of the strict toe to bar is that you aren't utilizing any momentum from a kip or any kind of swing going up to the bar. The hands are the base, right? So like when we're lifting, we're doing squats, the feet are the base, they're my plants on the floor. In this case, I'm on the bar. Hands are the base, they're engaged into the top of the bar. That's gonna activate my lats, forearms, and that's gonna allow me from the hands down to the hips to work on pulling my feet up in the air. To the bar, okay? In a perfect world, we're going up there with mostly, if not completely straight legs, essentially folding into a V up type position. Uh, but if we need to modify that a little bit, let's get the knees up into the chest and get the feet a little bit of a kick just to finish, right? And if you're able to surprise yourself and that's easy, then let's get there a little bit faster. Stay tuned for movement modifications. All right, guys, modifications for day 115. So if we do not want to run or if we aren't capable of running, the modifications are 500 guys, 400 girls, meters on a rower, on a Concept 2 bike, so a bike without the Airdyne handles. We're looking at 800 meters. And then on an Airdyne assault bike, um, an echo bike from row, we're looking at 40 calories for the guys and 28 calories for the girls. If you have options, be careful which one you pick because some of those will be much more terrible than the others. Um, on the kettlebell swing, so the second one here, if you don't have the kettlebell or if you guys only have a really light kettlebell, uh, RX on the workout is 53 for the guys, 35 for the ladies, then there's a couple things we can do. We can always split it up into 20 reps around. We only have a light kettlebell do single arm swings, in which case maybe we're looking at 10, maybe you guys spice it up to 24 and 12 each side, what have you. Uh, if you have a dumbbell, this one for example is the same weight as the kettlebell, we can technically swing the dumbbell. Um, if we have two lighter dumbbells, we can swing them on the outside. There's obviously a skill component there of making sure you're not going to clip yourself in the knees. Um, if we're only looking at a barbell, a RDL, or a good morning, uh, it's still going to hit the hamstrings. It's still going to require hip extension aggressively coming back through. Um, that can also be done with a band. So those are both options. Um, if you only have a band, you can also, as I demonstrated before, take the band, wrap it around an anchor point, step away from that anchor point so the band's pulling in tension behind us. We're going to keep our wrists tight in our hips, let the band track back into the hamstrings before we push down into the floor and squeeze the glutes through. A couple key points with that movement. Make sure the feet are actively pushing into the ground, specifically the big toes. Make sure the glutes are squeezing through by grounding down through the hamstrings, not pulling through by lifting our chest up and dropping our feet off the ground. Okay? Big difference there, especially when it comes to teaching and training proper, proper motor patterns versus poor ones. All right, now, if we don't have the ability to do the strict toe bar, I do not want you guys to go to a kipping toe bar. I would rather see you come into a strict L raise with those legs straight and you locked out, toes pointing forward. Uh, you can do a V up on the ground. You can do a straight legged sit up on the ground. Or honestly, if you want to mix it up and keep it light, you can obviously just switch it to a regular ab max sit-up. In that case, I would probably increase the reps. 
uh, either to the 14 or 21 number, however you want to go about that. All right, I will see you guys tomorrow on Thursday for day number 116.